This message has been brought to you by our listeners here at listener-sponsored KPFT Radio. Back to you, Marlo Blue. Thank you, Doyle Odom. Well, as we announced earlier, activists continue to protest against the Keystone XL pipeline. This time, longtime Gulf Coast activist Diane Wilson and Bob Lindsay Jr. have locked their necks to oil tanker trucks destined for Valero's Houston refinery in solidarity with Tar Sands Blockade's protests of Trans Canada's Keystone XL pipeline. They're also set to begin a sustained hunger strike and demand that Valero divest from Keystone XL Pipeline. Joining us live by phone to talk more about this action as well as what's next is Tar Sands Blockade spokesperson Ramsey Sprague. Ramsey, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thank you for having me. First of all, let's, let's ask, why are you targeting Valero Energy Corporation in this particular protest? Well, Valero... Um is one of the largest uh, shipping investors in the in the Keystone XL pipeline project. The shipping contracts that they purchased uh, at the time uh, sums to the largest investment in uh, Keystone XL, uh, basically guaranteeing that there would be uh, a buyer at the end of the pipeline, and Valero is that buyer. Uh, for that reason, we feel that the communities uh, at the end of the Keystone XL pipeline are already overburdened uh, with toxic chemical emissions from, you know, refineries, chemical plants, tire manufacturing facilities, et cetera, that all surround these com- types of communities along the Gulf Coast, um, environmental justice communities. And we just feel like this is an egregious um, violation, continued violation of their, their rights to clean air and land and water and feel that uh, as the largest investor that... Um, Valero should divest um, and invest whatever money that they were uh, planning to invest or had invested in the shipping contracts into the health and well-being and security of the people of uh, Manchester specifically is where we're organizing, uh, where we have the actions today. Mm -hmm. Certainly we're looking to amplify the voices of all of those who are at the end points of uh, the Keystone XL pipeline, including those in Port Arthur. Right. I want to ask a little bit, for those who are not familiar in our listening audience with the term environmental racism, because really this is uh, this is something that you've been describing. Is uh, What is environmental racism, and why have you specifically zeroed in on this Manchester location? Well, um, Manchester has an, uh, about a 90% Latino population. Um, Manchester's relationship with the Valero, Valero refineries is really a textbook case of environmental racism. Um, the community has uh, is a poor, is a working class, um, working poor community, and has little financial support for pursuing lawsuits against Valero about their refinery emissions violations and holding them to task with their obligations under the Clean Air Act um, and other you know regulatory acts that are supposed to protect public health. You know, without the money for lawsuits and without the political political agency necessary to uh, legislatively rein in criminal polluters like Valero, the community suffers. And uh, all the meanwhile, Valero posts record profits. Um, clearly, as a primary investor in the infrastructural project uh, of the Keystone XL pipeline, uh, the refiners have to be one of the largest recipients of the Canadian Park. And they have a responsibility um, to the people of Manchester and the people of, um, of Port Arthur, and we want to hold them uh, responsible for the crimes that they're committing against the people in those communities. Uh, we have skyrocketing cases of cancers, blood diseases, um, premature deaths, uh, childhood leukemias, and all of these take a, an incredible psychological toll on the community uh, as well as a, a, a physical toll, as you can imagine. You know, as we said in our um our uh, opening piece here that uh, activists Diane Wilson and Bob Lindsay Jr. have uh, actually taken physical action to protest this uh, tar sands blockade. Tell us a little bit about the hunger strike and and how is that going to work? Well, um, well, they launched the hunger strike today by locking themselves um, by the necks with bicycle U-locks to uh, trucks that were delivering uh, 
chemical feedstock to Valero's um, refinery and to the surrounding industry uh, in the in the Manchester community. Um, they're going to be in jail on the hunger strike. Um, they will not eat until Valero divests. Um, their interest, of course, stems from their being uh, lifelong residents of the Gulf Coast, uh, both from Calhoun County. They're actually, um, they've been friends since the fifth grade. They went to fifth grade together. They're both 64 years old. Um, Bob Lindsay Jr. was just designated um, the San Antonio Bay Keeper, uh, San Antonio Bay Water Keeper, rather. And um, that's, that, of course, is the Water Keeper Alliance, which has really strict protocol uh, about who can be designated those types of uh, positions. Um, and Diane Wilson has a, a you know much higher profile, of course, um, no stranger to civil disobedience, and she's been fighting industrial pollution in Sea Drift and in Calhoun County and along the Gulf Coast um, for, for decades now. And, um, of course, her willingness to use tactics like civil disobedience and hunger strikes are what... Um, and, of course, the successes that those bring for her community uh, change the landscape of environmental justice along the Gulf Coast and, and empower the communities to uh, to be able to raise their voices and get more attention to the cause of um, their, you know, their liberation from the crimes of these criminal polluters like Valero. You know, for those of you who may just be now joining us, we are speaking with a spokesperson from the Tar Sands Blockades. They are protesting, of course, the Keystone XL pipeline, and there has been some action today out in Manchester County. We're talking with Ramsey Sprague. Uh, Ramsey, what do you want our listeners to take away from this? Well, um, that there are human voices that are systematically silenced um, and to a terrible degree of the Manchester suffering, like, like I said, uh, incredible rates of, of cancer. There's just the level of sheer chemical exposure is staggering. Uh, Valero um, is, is, uh, uh, is often emitting far above their uh, regulatory limits and to the tune of sometimes thousands of times more than the regulatory statutes allow under the Clean Air Act uh, of chemicals like benzene, um, of nickel, chromium, and other uh, cancer-causing uh, chemicals. And really, that adds up to a, a kind of toxic soup that these uh, communities are forced to breathe with no recourse. Um, and, you know, their studies have shown that this is like, this would be like a person living in... Uh, living on a highway during rush hour traffic 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's simply not a safe environment to raise children in. It's not a safe environment to grow old in. It's not a safe environment to live in. And it's a, it's a crime against their rights to access to clean air, water, and, and land. Um, clearly, companies like Valero cannot operate without violating the law and... Um, you know, regulatory agencies like the TCEQ, the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality, are dead set and ignoring uh, their crimes or downplaying them as much as possible. Right. Well, Ramsey, we, we want to thank you for your time. Is there a website where people can go to get more information? Absolutely. Parsonsblockade.org will be covering the hunger strike as it's ongoing and possibly growing. Um, you know, folks can, can join in and in, in solidarity with the people of Manchester and with Diane and, and Bob as they venture forward to, to bring these crimes against uh, communities like Manchester to the fore of the national dialogue about Keystone XL. Ramsey Sprague, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much. Have a good afternoon. Same to you.